Hey guys, this is Hydra from X Trades, and in this video, we're gonna go over um, options liquidity and what it is and how it can affect your options trading. So, first, let's go over what options liquidity is. So, options liquidity is basically how easy it is to buy um, options contracts, buy and sell them without actually having a big impact on the price itself. So, for example, let's take a look at Apple. Apple is a big cap stock, right? And Apple trades millions of shares every single day. So I could buy a million of sh a million shares of Apple, buy and sell them instantly, and um, I would be able to do that very easily, right? But if I'm buying a penny stock, I'm not going to be able to buy a million shares because there's not going to be that much flow and like volume available, right? So um, a small cap stock or a penny or penny stock won't be as liquid because it'll be hard to get in and sell those shares immediately but with the big cap tech stocks that are very liquid like apple um you can buy and sell very quickly and not impact the price of apple if i was buying a million shares of a penny stock then that would impact the price a lot right that would probably spike the price a lot so um yeah being able to get in and out very quickly is basically what liquidity is and uh yeah, stocks that trade a lot of volume are very liquid, and stocks that don't trade a lot of volume are illiquid. Alright, so now that we know what liquidity is, let's talk about options liquidity and how to tell if an option is liquid or not. So there's three main things, um, the bid-ask spread, the open interest, and the volume. So the volume is the total number of contracts traded and open interest is total outstanding contracts so for both open interest and volume higher open interest and a higher volume means more liquidity and uh, now let's talk about the bid ask spread so the bid ask spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price of the um, option contract so the tighter or narrower the spread is um, the more liquid that contract is and <coughs> vice versa as well so now let's take a look at an example so iot is a stock that's relatively illiquid or at least for options so the bid ask spread here is uh, 15 cents apart and the volume here is 41 and the open interest here is four now let's take a look at spy and compare that to iot so spy the volume is 49,000. open interest is 10,000, right uh, for IOT, it was like 40 and 4. So that's a really big difference. And the spread here is only 2 cents. For IOT, it was 15 cents. So SPY is definitely a more liquid stock just because it has so much more volume, so much more open interest. And the spread is also a lot tighter, right? So that's a very clear way that you can tell the difference between a liquid stock <coughs> and an illiquid stock uh, for options. And also, <clears throat> the options themselves can also have diff different, like for example, this one's the most liquid one, right? It has the most volume for SPY. And typically, if you're playing in the money, they typically tend to be a little bit less liquid. And also out of the money, they also tend to be a little bit less liquid. So for example, SPY here, um, SPY in the money call has only 791 volume compared to this one, which has like 50,000, right? So there's a big difference between the liquidity of this one and this one and another way you can tell is also open interest open interest here is also a little bit less and then the big easiest way you can tell is look at the spread here the spread here is 14 cents the spread here is only two cents right so um again the spread is the difference between the ask minus the bid so 251 minus 249 two cents here 14 cents right so those are the three ways you can tell um or you can easily assess how liquid um, an option is for a stock. And the factors that affect liquidity are tight spreads. So we just talked about this. Small bid ask difference um, means more liquidity. And the underlying stock itself, right? So SPY trades millions and millions of shares every single day. IOT does not do the same. So therefore, SPY um, is very likely to have more liquidity for options compared to IOT, right? So the stock itself has to be liquid as well. Um, and volatility impact. So if a stock is very volatile, then there's a very good chance that it's going to attract traders and make 
those option contracts also more liquid. So for example, um, Coinbase had a really strong move up recently and that attracted a lot of traders and its options have been, uh, yeah, its options liquidity has increased a lot compared to how it was before when I was just chopping around and was very, <clears throat> or, or had lower volatility. And some other things you have to consider are expiration dates. So near term options, so weekly contracts tend to have less uh, liquidity compared to um, options or expiration date, dates that are at least like a month out or two weeks out. Or, yeah. So uh, typically you want to be buying, you don't want to be buying weeklies unless you're day trading, then that's, that's completely fine. But uh, typically if you're trying to find the best liquid options, then you want to go out a couple weeks or a month and liquidity risk. Um, so you have to make sure that you aren't buying options that are illiquid because if you want to get in and out quickly, then that's going to be a problem. Um, for example, if I buy um, SPY, an SPY contract, I'll be able to sell that immediately for like the same price, so I won't lose much if I wanted to buy and sell at the same time or, or right after, right? But if I do this for a liquid stock like IoT, then it would be a bit harder. So if I bought for two fifty and I wanted to sell immediately, even the even though the price didn't change. Uh, I probably won't be able to sell for 250 just because it's an illiquid stock and I won't have anyone else buying it for 250 So I'd probably have to buy it or sell it for a small loss for like 235 um, But yeah, that's basically the liquidity risk that you have to take into account when you're buying illiquid stocks. And now we're going to talk about why <clears throat> not all stocks have options. So there's certain criteria that are set by option exchanges and if those stocks meet those criteria then they'll have options otherwise they won't have options um, so the main reasons why a stock might not have, have options is because lack of liquidity so yeah if it's just doesn't trade that many shares every single day then likely won't have the options feature and if it's a low share price so penny stocks and <clears throat> if it's a small cap small cap stock then also likely doesn't trade that many shares so um also probably won't have options then and volatility so if a stock is very or it has very low volatility then it's also likely that it won't have options but there is one important thing to note that stocks that didn't have options in the past might gain options if they start becoming more widely traded or they meet the criteria set by the option exchanges um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about options liquidity. I hope this video helps and uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.